Today we're going to talk about uh, strategies for keeping multi-family plumbing systems uh, running smoothly. And we're going to cover three main topics today. We're going to talk about uh, pipe problems and their causes, uh, what the various solutions are for pipe problems, and then project evaluation. How do you go about uh, solving the problems, coming up with the solution, and, and, and evaluating your various options? So to start off with, typical pipe problems. Uh, most of these are, are, are fairly straightforward. Uh, poor water flow or low water pressure uh, is one of the more common ones in older buildings, uh, especially high-rise buildings. Tenants have issues uh, with just low water flow, uh, especially the higher up in the, the building they are, the, the worse it gets. Uh, poor water quality. This is typically having uh, red or brown water or small red particulate coming out of a faucet or even uh, clogging the strainer uh, of a faucet. Brown or green stains on, on fixtures, uh, again, depending on whether you have copper or galvanized piping, uh, over time leaves stains on fixtures, bathtubs, toilets, sinks, et cetera, um, which just become problematic over time. And, and then leaks, uh, both leaks within side of, of walls uh, and in uh, ceilings, uh, as well as uh, concrete slab leaks, which are, are particularly difficult to, to identify where they are, where they're coming from, and, and, and what the causes are, and then to access them to, uh, to, to fix them. So what causes these, uh, these problems? Well, there's, there's two principal uh, factors at play. One is erosion and one is corrosion. I, I think corrosion is, is pretty much what everybody thinks of when, when they have uh, pipe issues and actually rust building up, uh, you know, pipes rusting and pipes corroding, um, building up of, of material, which you could see in the picture in the upper right, uh, the galvanized pipe with, with the severe, what's called tuberculation, which is just rust, uh, rust bloom and mineral deposits built up. Um, and then thinning of the walls and pitting, especially in, in copper pipes. Erosion is a little less known, but erosion is, is simply that. It's the water eroding the copper material away of a pipe and thinning the walls so that uh, it develops uh, pinhole leaks. Uh, another is aggressive water. That's something that, that's uh, kind of a vague term that you'll hear from time to time. And aggressive water really just means water uh, that is uh, more corrosive than others. And, and what makes this water more corrosive? Uh, there's a, a, a multiple factors, one being uh, the oxygen content in the water. Uh, is the water hard? Does it have uh, minerals in it, such as is calcium, magnesium, etc.? cetera? Uh, is it the soft, which is typically a low pH uh, and, and has the lack of, of calcium, and uh, 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 magnesium in the water. Uh, soft water is, is, is in the lower pH is what typically people associate um, with being aggressive water. Uh, but in actuality, that's probably the least uh, severe of the factors that are listed up here. Uh, that factors like chlorine, if you're on a public water system, how much chlorine is, is added into the system by, uh, by the municipality, which is a very corrosive chemical, and then the temperature. <laughs> Certainly hot water systems, heat magnifies and accelerates the problems. And, and so typically when you have pipe problems, you'll see it in your hot water system before uh, the cold water system. Other contributors are inferior metal. Over time, there's been a variety of manufacturers of, of copper and galvanized pipes, and depending on how thick the walls were of the pipes that they cast and what types of, of materials they use uh, have an effect on uh, the longevity of the pipe. And then poor insulation techniques of, of, this, of the system. <clears throat> 